Dave Meltzer joining us here today, talking the news issue of the Wrestling Observer newsletter, which is available with your subscription to WrestlingObserver.com. So we just plug Wrestling Observer and we talk about the radio shows, the podcasts, the archives, 13,000 archived episodes. Well, when you sign up, you also get the Observer. And uh, I think we're still at about 40,000 words weekly, which means... More than that these we- these last few weeks. Yeah, you basically read two observers, and it's like reading Death of WCW. So if you like reading, boy, have we got uh, we got the newsletter for you. Boy, there's, boy there's, there's a lot the last two weeks. This has been an incredible stretch of news for sure. Well, the first thing I want to ask about quickly is at the beginning of every observer, there's the match of the week. And I, I note that the match of the week here is John Moxley, Brian Danielson. So... I presume that means that you thought that that was a better match than Shingo and Ishii. Yes, I guess that would mean that. All right, we're on the same page there. If you're if you're looking, I mean, I had a. I'll tell you what. When it comes to match of the week, I had a really tough time between that the Young Bucks match, um, Shingo and Ishii. I thought was just below those two. Honestly, um, I thought the Punk match with MJF was below that. But to the readers, the Punk and MJF match was actually voted the best match of. The pay-per-view. Wow. Yeah, but that pay-per-view had a lot of candidates for best match. You know, there's, it was it was down when when that Jericho and Kingston match <clears throat> and Hangman and Adam Cole match is like your whatever it was fourth and fifth best match on a pay-per-view. That sure says something about a pay-per-view because there are very few pay-per-views that either of those two matches wouldn't win best match um, by a lot in. Okay, so the there are a bunch of stories here this week, but uh, the one everyone's been asking about today involves Cody. What is going on with Cody Rhodes? You know, there's still nothing. I mean, I've heard a lot of rumors, but there's nothing that I really want to talk about until I get more stuff confirmed. But I think the basic situation is this. On Monday's Raw show, if he's there, that means he's signed, obviously. If they start an angle with Seth Rollins with somebody, and it's not Cody Rhodes, that means it fell through, at least as far as that goes. Because Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins was the match that Cody Rhodes was going to debut on at WrestleMania. So there's your answer. Um, I mean, as far as, like, what he's doing, um, we don't know. I mean, it was that match was that match was considered a for sure. It was on the list, but then there was a snag in the negotiations, and I don't know where the snag, you know, where where things have come. Obviously, they've probably talked a lot since it first was a snag. So um, we'll see Monday, I guess, or maybe we'll find out before Monday. But I would say Monday at ten o'clock or at eleven o'clock when that show's over, eleven o eleven, you know, um, you'll know um, one of you know you'll know if he's in. If they do nothing with Seth at all on that show and don't lead him to a direction that tells you that they expect him, but he wasn't there, and obviously, you know, if he's if he's if Seth goes with him, with somebody else, then you know that uh, they've given up on him for right now. And obviously, that would mean that yes, given up for right now. So, so for right now, now, there's nothing. This would look, be all based. This would all be about Monday. Is all about whether he's facing Seth at WrestleMania. It doesn't mean that like. If, he's not if Seth, yeah, starts feuding with whoever, that that he's like not coming into the company. This is just strictly for WrestleMania build Monday. Right, 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 right. And and there's no look, like there's no guarantee of anything. I mean, like people go like, well, could he go back to AEW? You know, of course he could. He's a star. Nobody's turning away stars right now, unless there's like political reasons. You know, I mean, as far as you know that that, that they can't come in. I mean. We're we're in a very competitive wrestling environment, and Cody Rhodes is a very valuable person, even though some people don't want to hear that. Um, and both sides would love to have him for that very reason. Well, Dave, I guess the other big news of the day is William Regal's status, which has been talked about ever since his promo on Wednesday. You wrote a little bit about it in a newsletter this week. And apparently a little bit before the show, uh, William Regal responded to some things on Twitter, I guess, as well, talking about the rumor mill and gossip about his health. Can you kind of shine a little bit of light on what his what you know about his condition right now and anything about that promo that was done on Wednesday? Okay, so on um, he will have a show. He did an interview with Chris Jericho that's going to be released on this coming Wednesday. And he goes very much into detail on, you know, what has happened to him. I mean, there's people who know stuff that happened a couple years ago that really, um, I don't know how 
much it got out. I mean, some of it did, but it's he goes into detail on that. And also, I'm pretty sure he's going to go into detail on the stuff that a lot of people do know from way back, you know, when when he had the the other issues and everything. So that's the basic situation. He said that he's healthy now, even though he did go on the air and say, um, I'm not long for this world. But he said he feels the best he's felt in a long time. And but the show goes into detail on all of his health issues. And from what I was told, um, it's a lot of details and it's a lot of stuff that has never come out. So that's the story. So also we have the the lineup and a lot of talk about uh, about WrestleMania and uh, in the new observer, WrestlingObserver.com. Uh, you do note that Austin has been upping his cardio of late. So I have a question for you. Yes. So it sounds like ridiculous on the surface, but when you think about it, it's actually not that ridiculous in a lot of ways, I think. And that is they've announced that Steve Austin is going to be on the KO show. So it's not a match. It's going to be a, a KO show segment. And obviously, you know, all hell's going to break loose. They have announced that that is on Saturday. And WrestleMania is Saturday and Sunday. So is it possible that they advertise the KO show and they shoot an angle on the KO show to set up a WrestleMania match on Sunday? A match with Steve Austin and Kevin Owens? Because in in the, like it would seem to make no sense to not announce that Steve Austin is going to be wrestling in advance, but everyone who is going to WrestleMania on Saturday is in town. You can you're still either going to go to the show the next day or you can immediately go buy a ticket to go to the show the next day. So it's different than in the past where if it's a one day WrestleMania, like you know if I find out on on SmackDown that Austin is wrestling Sunday, like I, I'm not going to get a plane ticket and fly out that quickly. So well, it's not about it's not about that. It's get, it's just about getting people to uh, to watch the show. But I mean, I know what you're saying. And is that a possibility? I mean, I don't want to say because if I say it's a possibility. Then people go, oh, this is what you're saying. It's going to happen. I don't know. I know that. What I know is this, is that um, it's not going to, you know, like a lot of people think that they're going to do a back and forth talking segment and it'll kick him in the stomach and give him a stunner and that's it. And I suppose it's possible that will happen. But my indication is, is that they're they were going to do more than that. And again, I know he's upping his cardio, which tells me he's not going to kick him in the stomach and, and just do a stunner and that's it. Um the story we've heard is that he's he can go for a couple minutes, but um, you know I don't think he. I mean, they may do it that way. I mean, the the impression I have is that they didn't want to advertise a match because he didn't want it that way. Um, but we will get a physical altercation between the two. Could it happen Saturday and then build for something Sunday? If he's up for it and wants to do a match, a hundred percent, it could happen. That's up to, you know, it, 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 essentially it's up to what he wants to do. I mean, that's been the whole thing. Originally, this was going to be a match. And the whole thing was is that he was not comfortable with the idea of advertising a match. I think it's got to do with maybe his own professional pride of, you know, not wanting to commit to something and not having, like going out there and not having a really good match or people going afterwards, ah, you know, it only went six minutes or something, right? So everything, essentially everything is up to him and, and how he feels. But, Dave, that, like, who is this for then? I, I can understand WWE wanting to have the idea of having Austin come back in a match, but, like, if Austin's just announced and people are, know he's going to do something, which is the stunner, I mean, at this point, I mean, was anybody really clamoring to see Steve Austin back? Is any of this for him wanting to do it, or is this no, this outside? No, this is, this, is this is them trying to put together, you know, um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the biggest WrestleMania they can, and... With The Rock unavailable, Steve Austin, you know, is the, the biggest star that they could bring back. So it was just like they wanted him on the show. He was always going to do something on the show anyway. But it's like, you know, how much is he willing to do? And then he's going to do exactly what he's willing to do. So as far as the rest of the, the Mania card, I mean, we got uh, five matches both nights thus far. And, uh, you know, I think one of the big questions is how long these shows going to be. And I keep having people tell me, oh, they're not going to be as long as you think. They're not going to be as long as you think. But, I mean, it's WrestleMania. And people are flying in, and they're going in those buildings. And I just have this feeling that they're not going to do, like, these these two short shows. I think we're going to think No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm sure that they'll be three and a half hours plus. You know, like, three, you know, I, I think the idea, 
actually, you know, I talked to one of the top guys in the company, and, and it was actually three and a half hours was kind of like, because this was before they officially announced it, but remember I told you that they were definitely going to do two nights. Um, and um, it was like, the, the discussion was three and a half hours each night. That doesn't mean that they may go four, um, you know, once they get there and just feel like it. But the idea is certainly not to go more than four, put it that way. I mean, you know, three and a half hours, I think, was the optimum of what, what they were looking at, rather than six or seven, which is what they're trying to avoid by doing two shows. And uh, and quickly here, because you can uh, read it yourself in the New Observer, but uh, what's new on uh, on Ring of Honor? That's the top story this week. Well, we just kind of go through all the different possibilities. I mean, there's nothing, you know, like um, they're working through everything. They, they did the sale, you know, as, as quick as they could, and now they're trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. And, I mean, the key is Tony Khan's going to be booking a show on April the 10th, which isn't that very far away, which is going to be a Ring of Honor pay-per-view. So, um, you know, we're going to have a, you know, and we don't have a lineup and it's going to be very tricky, um, you know, to put together a lineup. Is he going to send a whole bunch of, I, I, I would presume that there'll be a bunch of AEW guys on the show just because there's nobody like as in zero people under Ring of Honor contract. All right. Well, hold that thought. We have an end of break, everyone. Thanks, Dave. We'll plug the Observer when we come back from the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Google Tiger Jackson wrestler and then go into images and then go into GIFs. <laughs> he does all these spots where he spins on his head. I'm crying. And I'm supposed to be watching this stupid show, but I just keep watching Tiger Jackson spots on Google. I hereby induct him into the Matt Cleary Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you, Craig. That's two to that's two to zero or whatever. Aye. Okay. If you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.